I was just listening to an alleged teaching about God and his nature on the radio. It doesn't matter who it was because they all teach the same thing. It's funny, I observe politics in the world and it's obvious when you look at the so-called news business, it doesn't matter where you look, they all say the same thing. Every channel, every newspaper, they all say the same thing. So you don't have to worry about missing one. You miss one, you just go and see the other one. They all say the same thing, and in religion it's the same thing, even though they argue with each other. Unlike those uh, political news deliverers, so-called, they argue with things that have nothing to do with anything because they essentially agree with each other about everything, and that's the main point is God is managing and even micromanaging us through means of punishment through means of damaging us, causing fear, causing respect, causing honor, through his power to bring suffering. And I'm sure a lot of them wouldn't even argue with that if I put it that way, or especially if I put it in a more mild way, a softer way. But in essence, that's what they're saying. But this guy was being pretty blunt, and he gave a story about a professional athlete, and uh, he was cruising along, doing great, And all of a sudden, this injury came out of nowhere. It didn't even seem to have a reason behind it, as far as physically even. But then he realized the spiritual nature of it when he saw some story about how shepherds will break the leg of their sheep to make the sheep dependent on them. So the sheep won't do anything without the shepherd. Because once that leg is healed, then the sheep will never leave the shepherd's side. And then he said in no uncertain terms, you know, God just has to break your leg sometimes. Uh, They weren't shouting amen a lot, but I'm sure they're in agreement with him. This is not a revolutionary thing. I used to believe some form of that. However skeptical I was of it, I was taught to believe that. And to the extent I didn't believe it, I was probably immature. And I'm just so glad to be free from that. But I just wanted to put that down. It's amazing to me that that we are taught not only that God will leave us and forsake us, he'll, he'll break our legs, he'll bring tremendous suffering to us simply for the purposes of getting what he wants, which is us bowing and scraping so we can get what we want. And if you try to analogize that or translate that into a human-to-human relationship, I think most of us would agree that's pretty sick. If you had this friend who is willing to bring suffering into your life to to get you to do what he wants you to do or she wants you to do. And then when you you worship her and tell her that she's the greatest thing in the world, then she'll stop the suffering and even bring blessing, which is really what you want out of them anyway. You don't want any relationship with them. You don't want to really know who they are. You just want to get stuff out of them and avoid, avoid further punishments. And I just wonder people ever really think about it in those terms and say well that's ridiculous and not only that god's different he's not the same as a human human relationship god is an individual and he made us in his image and his likeness he related to adam in a pretty clear way i think they did things together he he made the animals he brought them to adam and adam named the animals he provided for adam yes that's true but he wasn't in the process of managing Adam's life, do this and don't do that or else you're, I'm going to beat you until you do the right thing. There was one thing he wasn't to do, and I'm not going to get off into what that's all about, but it wasn't about micromanaging his life. Adam had free reign in the garden to do as he would. There's only one thing he couldn't do, and he did it. And when you look at it for what it really is, is he, all Adam really did was he didn't believe. And it's the same thing now. If you don't believe, then how... If I don't even believe that you're my friend, how are you going to be my friend? No matter how much you want to be my friend, if I don't believe it, if I believe other things are more important to me, then we have no friendship. We have no relationship. And that's all it is. But if I think that you're going to cause suffering in my life to keep me in line, I don't know. I guess people think that's, that's cool that God does that. I don't think it is. I don't even think he does it. He doesn't have to. Life, the world, just the way things are, we suffer consequences for our own dumb things. That's the whole point. He's there 
to comfort us, you know, not in spite of our stupidity or stubbornness, but for the purposes of showing us how much he loves us and uh, his patience toward us so that we can see, wow, this God really loves us. He's trying to teach us. He's trying to help us. He's trying to comfort. And when we start to see that, that's when we get some, at least a modicum of freedom, at least open the doorway to something other than my God breaks my legs for my own good. That, uh, I might work in coaching or something, but even then you'd probably be arrested in most countries. So our God is basically practicing child abuse according to man. I know what they'd say, well, God's ways aren't our ways. You're darn straight. His love and his patience is so beyond anything we can comprehend. And if you want him, then you'll have him. But if you don't want him and you want religion, you can have that. That's the point of it. It's not about performing to some level to keep him from bringing mayhem and destruction in your life until you wake up. I, I just think that's perverse. It's sick. It's evil. And it's 99% of Christendom, unfortunately. So if you're in that, I'd suggest you get out because there's nothing there except emptiness at best and pain and failure at worst. And that's all I got to say. And, uh, God bless everyone. Can't say that in Jesus' name. That's a sad reality. God bless.